like to start? Okay, yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Jay from the office of Senator Lisa Antiveros. Uh, I listened with great interest to the discussion on labor force participation of um, women and men. And I was wondering if there have been studies looking at how this can impact, the differential can impact on um, contributory pensions later on. Because I really believe contributory pensions, an argument can be made that contributory pensions can be gendered in the sense that since women take longer times off because of their reproductive um, burdens, because um, so, mezzo mas maliet yung, yung pensions nila. So, okay, we're trying to fashion an argument for universal pension. That's what, um, in the end, that's what our office would do. So, I'm wondering if there is data to support the idea that contributory pensions are gendered or are biased against women. Because I think there is global data for that. I'm not sure if there is in the Philippines. That can be used to make a case for universal pension. It's a corrective measure given um, inherent um, disparities in labor force. Participation. Sorry, that's my first question. My second is in agriculture. I'm going to make this very quick. Um, I wonder if the survey took into account self-perceptions of work. For example, um, in the, fish, uh, the fishing industry, um, sabi walang, participa walang participation ng women. But if you look at the value chain of fisheries, women actually help sa paggawa ng mga nets, di ba? And in post-production. So I wonder if um, the survey took that into consideration. Uh, yung sa tanong mo, Jay, on whether there are data, actually, I haven't seen one. So, but if there is uh, one, one data set, then maybe you can share with us and, and, and maybe we can take a look at it and, and, and see what we can do in order to analyze how we can make uh, this social pension contribution gendered. So, if there's one, then maybe you can, we can share. Yes, uh, on, on, on pension. Uh, well, I haven't seen a lot of studies on uh, gender disparities of pension, but then uh, we have this experience from Japan where yung mga lalaki nito trabaho sila sa labas, yung mga babae sa bahay usually, at ang nangyayari pag may pension sila, kaki sila by law na mandated na yung part ng pension ng lalaki magpunta sa babae. And actually, uh, there are studies that they found na pag nag-retire na yung lalaki, nai-stress yung babae sa Japan. Kasi yung mga lalaki sa bahay, Parang kung ano-ano yung nakikita. So, so merong stress factor. Uh, but then, uh, having said that, uh, on universal pension, ang, ang problema, it's not just gender, but also aging. Kasi, well, by 2030s, we would be an aging society. By 2060s, would be an aging society. So, sino, ang, ang tanong, sino magbabayad ng lahat ng pension na ito? So, one way to do it is yung through unfunded pension, so yung mga tatrabaho, bibigay sila ng pera from their pocket to the elderly's pocket, and that's one way to do it. Ang problema doon, kaka kakaunti yung mga tao magtatrabaho because of aging, as a, as a proportion of the population, and that would uh, pose a burden on those working people. Well, another way to do it is to look at sa ibang uh, bansat, like Singapore, there would be, well, you have this unfunded pension, but then you also have this funded pension, forced saving ang mangyayari. So, for every paycheck, you would provide 2% or whatnot from your paycheck, pera mo yun. Tapos, pag kailangan mo, pwede mong i-withdraw. So, that's one way to do it. So the survey wasn't really designed to look at gender roles and perceptions. So we unfortunately didn't ask that question. Let me just take this occasion to make an admission. I actually thought that most of the, before doing the study, most of the differences in wages, reported wages, was entirely due to activities, differences in activities. So ngayon, bilib na talaga ako sa research. <laughs> you really need to go and get the data. You, ju you can't live on presumption only. Talaga dapat evidence-based. So the evidence does point to a wage difference for the same profile of work. Thank you, Roel. Um, second question, please. Yes. 
Mike Cabalfi. Good morning. Thank you for your presentations. I'd like. Um, I have a question. Um, first, uh, on uh, Dr. Wells' uh, presentation, and this is actually in relation to the other findings as well, saying that you know, uh, like uh, Dr. Dakuikoy says, that the Philippines is basically egalitarian. But how come uh, Dr. Well uh, uh, has seen or found that you know, wages are actually uh, sort of biased towards men? You know? uh, my question, therefore, is, um, well, first, we have to sort of control certain things. Uh, for instance, uh, are we able to control for educational attainment in, in, the, in, the, in those statistics? Also for age, uh, of course we have seen that uh, age, uh, wage earnings, uh, age, uh, age uh, profile, or earnings age uh, profile as shown by Mike. And also, uh, one important actually sort of uh, data that is not usually available is the ab ability and uh, I'd like to just share sort of my own work uh, related to this is that you know um, if we actually look at returns because I did returns to education so actually um, as you may expect you know returns actually are or wages are initially, even without schooling, for males are higher than for females. But then returns to education actually increase for females uh, continuously, but for males they're actually stagnant up to about you know, eight years of uh, schooling. That's basically incomplete secondary. Only when you have complete secondary education do returns to education rise. And, and then, you, when, when you reach college education, that's actually when uh, the wage as well as the returns to education for males and females converge. In other words, what I'm saying is, uh, actually, the inequality in education is not so much uh, a, 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 a institutional or uh, it's actually educational in a sense because but when they reach, they both reach, you know, college level or a complete uh, tertiary, then the wage uh, actually uh, converge. So, uh, so my point is, uh, we have to also uh, consider the productivity one. Uh, that may be actually different also. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, education. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so uh, I don't want to stress the data so much. It's a very small sample. But we did uh, try to run Mincer type. Uh, because I was really curious, is there some systematic pattern? There is no systematic pattern. Uh, education is nowhere a good predictor, nor is age, interestingly, a predictor. At, well, uh, small sample caveats aside. And even considering, I didn't know that, but now that you've mentioned it, uh, that's interesting. But then I toss it back. Why would the same education deficit uh, penalize women more <laughs> than men, right? So yes, so with completion of a level, they, they will converge. But intuitively, you would expect that uh, the same deficit, the Lawang years undergrad, should still have the same impact at the margin for men and women, but apparently you're pointing out that it's not. So that still is a huge puzzle. Because of physical effort, so labor is more, uh, labor intensive. Um, yeah, so again, so uh, the, the, the tasks I mentioned, fertilizing, weeding, planting, uh, there's anecdotally, and even if you talk to people, there is no uh, strong physical effort required for these. Uh, you can make an argument that, say, land preparation, uh, controlling the draft animal, especially if you use a carabao, 
it could be stereotypically a man's job. But then I showed the picture. Just one sample <laughs> of that Nepali woman actually controlling the oxen. So who knows? If I may add from, uh, from non-agriculture on the side. So we, we were doing this uh, uh, analysis and we found that once you've controlled for education, the gender pay gap is about 30%. Pag dinagdag mo yung same occupation, same na lugar, same na industry, so kung doktor ka, tapos nagtrabaho ka sa isang business firm na ganito at ganun, yung gender pay gap actually decreases to 10%. But 10% is still big. So bakit merong 10%? And you're talking about the same occupation, the same region, same rural place, uh, same industry, but may 10% pa rin. Yes. This is not uh, including agriculture. Just to add a little uh, more information, uh, we're also doing a work on the uh, start-stop start marketing intermittency. And meron kami mga preliminary uh, analysis that would say that the intermittency actually, ang effect niya sa, women, uh, sa males, which is relatively flatter. While the effect of intermittency on females' wage is actually declining. So the more intermittent yung uh, uh, participation ng babae sa labor market, the higher, the lower would be her wage. So I think maybe the, these kinds of things are contributory to the, the, the disparities that uh, we are observing. I just uh, <coughs> want to share this, uh, uh, these questions with the rest. We have discussed this on the side, but I think they're kind of important. Um, you discussed about optimization choices uh, between market and uh, homework. Um, now, there's a proposal uh, it's from uh, Congressman Salceda that people working at home would be paid. My question is, what, what do you think about that? Is there any implication that we can draw to think about how wise or how stupid this uh, proposal? Okay, the second question uh, relates to, uh, I mean, particularly to uh, Arconi, um, on the labor force participation. Um, I think the last, the, uh, I've seen a graph recently which shows that over a long period, uh, the sh uh, labor force participation rate overall has been declining. Okay, there's a little fluctuation here and there, but overall it's been declining. The question is, uh, what's driving that decline in overall labor force participation rate? How much of it is accounted for by a decline or a change in female or women's <coughs> labor force participation? And within that, what's, what's the trend in the labor force participation rate of women? And what's driving that? Is it the fertility uh, uh, kind of uh, the, the move towards lower fertility rate? Uh, or is it uh, something else? Clarify is the is the proposal that the government will pay the two thousand? Yeah. Okay, so now it would be nice if it, it was some kind of slave labor that you know women rendered and then somebody else enjoyed, and now we need to pay reparations. But when they whoever did the housework, male or female, they rendered services that the household presumably consumed itself. 
So why would an outside party, what, what is the entitlement of that household that outside funds, external funds, uh, uh, be used to subsidize something that they essentially paid for through a non-market transaction? So it, it, it is a, I think it could be questioned on the fundamental basis of fairness. Just to add, uh, Doc Bik, no? uh, meron din kasi pong issue yan kasi uh, households, we've already acknowledged, no? I think si Mike, Mike was saying that uh, two generations are, are living in households today. So the question is, who among these households are you going to pay? Is it going to be the grandmother? Because grandmothers, they, they, they have a big part in raising children. So if you really want to value uh, unpaid work or care economy, then you should pay grandmothers as well. Are you going to pay the daughter who's also doing housework? Are you going to pay the, the father who's also doing housework? So everybody's doing housework. And then and so it, it's really very difficult how you will, st if you start paying them, it, it's really difficult because everybody will get paid in the process. Everybody will demand to be paid in the process. Better, or it's better for, or it's better for the parents to pay the grand, the grandparents. And I think we don't have enough information as far as that proposed bill is concerned to really um, provide a, a, a more informed, no, a more informed comment or a more informed opinion on the matter. But Mike, you have something to say, right? No. Yes. Just two things. Una, sabi ni sir, sino ko ba yun? Pangalawa. <laughs> Um, well, this is some, for, some form of UBI, universal basic income, I guess. But then uh, we don't have that much evidences on how effective UBI is. So there are very few countries that does UBI, and at least <laughs> those among the uh, there are some evidence that it's good, but not, not really. Well, uh, you know, at, uh, based on my discussion, sir, no, ang sinabi ko lang po is that uh, maybe the potential reason for this uh, the decline in trend is maybe it's housework. So I did some preliminary uh, analysis using the labor force uh, survey. And of those who are not participating in the labor force, 50% of women are actually, actually more than 50%, eh, uh, a little bit over 50% says that they are not participating in the labor force because they are doing housework. Compared to men um, whose main reason for not participating in the labor market because they are pursuing schooling. So, so yun po yung parang uh, nakikita natin talaga na dahilan. Uh, although we have to, to, to think about other issues as well, not other than housework. So maybe it's institutional, maaaring it has something to do with with the, the learning styles in, 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 in the education that gets translated in the labor force market. So it's, it's, it's all there we, and we have to, to study some more, make some effort to, do, to study some more. I'll reply based on the limited readings that I've done. Uh, well, this is not unique to the Philippines. We see this in the US. Uh, the women are getting better educated, but then you don't see them working more and actually, the labor force participation rate of NILA is going down. And, and another conundrum is that uh, this happens in a, in a, in a time when uh, fertility is going down. So kung isipin mo, mas konti yung bata, so mas konti yung alagaan mo, tapos magtatrabaho yung mga nanay. But, but then, uh, and they're better educated. So ang, ang niisip ng ibang tao, this is ano, uh, sayang sayang yung skills sa mga nanay. But then, uh, there is this counter-argument na hindi sayang. What actually happens is that mas intensive yung uh, engagement ng mga nanay, at least, do sa mga bata. So they spend more time with their children. So these children actually become more productive eventually when, when they go back to, to, when they go to work. And uh, maybe, well, I've not studied uh, this area uh, really, but based on the limited study that, I, that I've done, um, when the uh, economy is getting better, mas, ang tendency is that mothers uh, hindi sila katrabaho. Because your mothers, at least based on literature in, in, in my own study, we found that, that mothers are like insurance. 
So nung halimbawa, uh, I studied yung rice crisis in 1995-1998. So what happened was that nung nagkaroon ng rice crisis, biglang tumaas yung uh, labor force participation ng babae. Bakit? Kasi kailangan nila magtrabaho. So, ang, ang side effect naman nun, syempre, yung mga nanay, uh, kailangan magtrabaho para may mapakain, nawalan sila ng oras para sa mga anak nila. And, and this led to less uh, breastfeeding time for their, children, for their infants. So, yun naman yung flip side. Okay. Um, second set of questions. Anyone? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Chiki of Women's Business Council, Philippines. Um, I, I was concerned about the slow um, movement or progress that we've been having with regards to the improvement of women participation in the labor force. Um, I just like, and there were several proposals that you gave, um, Dr. Dakuikui, um, but the other gentleman can address this as well. What do you think would be the one major thing that we should do now that could serve as a tipping point that would leapfrog all our initiatives to finally cross that slow growth. Um, you mentioned the importance of data, and that's, been, that's what we're proving here. I was asking the table, what's stopping us from getting the data? I have, well, I'm, I'm obviously new here. Um, but that's my number one question, what's stopping us from getting it? But beyond that, what do you think would be the tipping point? What should we do now that could serve as a tipping point? It is a million dollar question. question. Yeah. It's actually very difficult uh, and I'm asking Sheila to ask some more <laughs> questions so that we can think. So for example, um, I, I think um, uh, they, they gave some uh, policy recommendations uh, and uh, would you like to expound more on that probably? Or maybe among all those, what do you think is the most important that we should start with? Because um, for me, for me, no, it, it's not really some sort of leapfrog, but I think uh, what's important is uh, to, to provide um, quality uh, child care services. Uh, because I think that part of the reason of this household problem has something to do with cultural, cultural and social rules. So, baka mamaya, we are not participating, women are not participating in the labor market because they think that baka mapabayaan ng anak ko, um, walang nag-aalaga, hindi natuturuan. So, I don't want to participate in the labor market precisely because I wanted to take care of my children. But if there are um, child, quality child care services around, it can give me a nudge that, oh, I, I will be comfortable um, putting my child into this, into the hands of other people, then maybe, just maybe, it's some sort of, na, of uh, a nudge that, uh, okay, maybe ma encourage tayo na participate in the labor market. It's not really cheeky, it's not really some sort of leapfrog, just like what you're saying, but I think it's a start that we really have to create a community for, a com uh, we really have to provide child care quality, uh, uh, accept, um, accessible, affordable, uh, quality child, child care services. And not only that, we must also start uh, into uh, looking into designing uh, systems for elderly care because as I have said earlier, both elderly care, ma care economy, elderly care and child care, um, it goes into the women's sphere of responsibilities. So the more, um, they, they were saying earlier, no, papataas na papataas na magiging matanda na tayo in the future and we really have to pay, uh, to, to, to really have to um, prepare for that eventuality. So I think it's really, uh, it's not really a leapfrog solution, but the first thing that we have to do is to provide um, support uh, through infrastructures, through services uh, in terms of child care, in terms of care economy. Oh, thank you for that. Um, as a matter, as, since I speak as Women's Business Council, we're the employers. So I think if there's if there's there's an initiative to have that research done, mm -hmm. to have the employer support that kind, because I was a housewife for ten years, and the reason why I started was able to start working was because I had a good house set of house help to help take care of my four children. So you're lucky, but exactly, for some, it's, exactly. it's not okay. But um, realizing again the con the conversations we have here that the employers need to understand that scenario. And I totally agree. I think it was the Athena study somewhere in the US that said it's not the education or the biases or the discrimination that helped, that 
cause us to lag behind. It's the choice. It's when women have children yeah. that we have the conscious choice that we're going to take it easy exactly. and slow down. Exactly. But and if we really have this nudge, you know, the presence of, of, of these quality child, child care services or care economy is some sort of nudge for us to, okay, I'm comfortable putting my children into the care of other people, then um, it, it might encourage me to participate more in the labor market. Definitely. So if the business community can do that, then better. Let us know how we can have that research done. Right. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I would like <coughs> uh, and then so we discuss about the uh, uh, involvement of uh, women in the market force, but uh, I don't know how can you help uh, and conduct research on this because when I'm still taking up a child development specialization in child development, we have a project <coughs> to help mother who's working. We encourage, uh, uh, sir, uh, we have an experiment that time, encourage the, uh, the company to put a, a daycare center within their, uh, within their uh, uh, what's a company so that the mother who has killed that was not uh, so that they can bring and then uh, bring the children there so that they can work efficiently at the same time they're not worrying about their children so it depends on the business how can they help women so that it can be more productive it so happened that I keep on suggesting this but I don't know if may sumunod but the time yung isang gumaginawa po namin na experiment is they provide even the uh, uh, play a small uh, slide, some toys, and then we able to train the employee how to handle children. So they give 15 minutes time. Siguro po hindi naman kabawasan sa kumpanya yung 15 minutes time to give yung time sa bata to teach them may values, whatever is related to education. I don't know how can you help through research so that we can help also women and also men. The men can bring also their children. I don't know how can you help because as an educator, wala na po kami magawa. Thank you for sharing the experience, ma'am. Uh, may feedback ba kayo or... Uh... Okay. Meron niya tang ano? I have a business model for that. Business model siya na gusto. Nice to have, definitely. Especially now, it's so difficult to find yaya. Madaling mga anak, mahirap maghanap ng yaya. But um, you have to incentivize it for businesses to take it on. That's one. But the other business model that's already being done in the U.S. is Bright Horizons. It is an external provider of day of childcare um, that who provide the service to buildings, for example, this building. And the incentive there is the, the, the building owner or the company that employs them or hires them to set it up gets a seal of good housekeeping that best pra um, places to work for for women. And that's plus points for their stock market, etc., etc. So there has to be an incentive system for that for businesses. It's nice to have. I would love to have that too. But um, without the overall ecosystem supporting it, it's going to be tough. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Matt. Okay. Um, yes. Thank you. This is actually, I just thought about it, uh, um, about my question and uh, your answer. But suppose you start from about this is the why it's declining despite increases in education, etc. If we start from the point of view of young medio poor, no? And the poor we know, they really work hard already, no? Full time na yan, sa bahay, kahit na sa bahay lang sila, sa farm, etc. Pati yung nanay, uh, yung husband wife. So, nagkaroon sila ng increase in income, assets or whatever, ano ang munang gagawin niya? Medyo relax lang muna siya. Siguro, siguro yung nana, yung uh, wife will will not have 
uh, work at home and work in the market. So the the initial response might be that ano, eh, medyo magkaroon naman tayo ng buhay, hindi lang hanap buhay. No? As income increases, the labor force participation rate, I think, is going to fall. Okay? So, but that is something good. That is something to be saying, usayang hindi nag ano. Okay? Naghahanap lang ng buhay yung kopol. Okay? So, maybe later on, as wages goes up, as in other countries, some of the, the opportunity cost increases also. So, some of them babalik kasi sayang yung opportunity to earn more money and maybe be able to buy all the kinds of good things in life, other good things in life. Yeah, that's a good theory that probably our researchers can take on to further their further studies to the green project. Okay. Yes, sir. Morning, I'm Ella from the Institute for Labor Studies, and uh, I'd like to ask the question to Mike. Uh, nabitin kasi ako sa last question on your slide, and I'd like to throw back the question, and maybe you can provide us some certain concrete recommendations on how do we really entice men to do unpaid um, housework or, or unpaid work, because uh, I, 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 I see that um, there's a possibility that we are actually trajectory-wise moving towards um, let's say expanding paternity leave for one in in the in the, in the AML it's uh, there's a leave sharing scheme uh, of course we're not as developed as Scandinavian countries that provide really a uh, long duration of paternity leave benefits for fathers but do we see that as one um, you know uh, one outlook for 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 the Philippines to take on in the future Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not a straight man, <laughs> and uh, maybe I, I won't have that kind of, um, you know, heteronormative. Um, maybe it, that's why I'm also asking Mike because he's uh, he's, he's now with a uh, with a spouse, and maybe there. Because your context is different. Yeah. Maybe Miss uh, Dr. Kim can also answer. Uh, well. Mahirap yung, uh, mahirap yung sagot. But, but let me first start with our story. Ang hirap ng matanong. Let me start with the story. Well, when I was in Japan one time, and we were talking about OFWs, uh, usually babae sa Pilipinas, and we have men uh, left behind, and they take care of their children. Natawa yung hapon. Kasi that is not, that's something new to them. Hindi mo, maki hindi mo makita yung mga hapon nag-aalaga sa mga bata, at least yung mga matatanda. Uh, and then, fast forward, I was, in, uh, I was talking to this Korean. Yung doon mga Korean dads, uh, dalawang beses lang, dalawang tanong lang tinatanong niya everyday. Kasi siya, may papasok siya sa umaga, pwede rin pa, pabalik siya, gabi na, tulog yung mga bata. Uh, dalawang lang tanong niya sa asawa niya. Una, kumain na ba yung mga bata? Nagawa ba ang homework? Ganun lang. Ganun lang yung role nila. So I guess uh, going back to the Philippines, we're quite uh, lucky uh, kasi mas equal tayo kumpara sa ibang mga bansa. And I guess uh, the, the root is that uh, if you want uh, men to, to participate more in housework, dapat isimula tayo sa bata pa lang. So this requires a change of, I guess, culture. So, bata pa lang, hindi na, dapat hindi natin ginigender yung mga housework. Kapag babae ka, dapat ikaw naguhugas ng pinggan. Lalaki sa bahay, sa labas ka, mag-garden ka dyan. Tapos siya mag-garden, manood ka na ng TV. Or, or even in schools. Na pag, sa schools, ang mga babae, nag, nag, naglilinis ng room. Yung mga lalaki nasa labas, naglaro. Or even in, in the media. Na, na we, we should not gender yung mga children. Na para pagtanda nila, mas mas open sila sa idea na dapat ikakontribute din sila sa mga.
just say something about the paternity? Hindi kasi, di ba, uh, earlier, parang doon sa last slide ko, I pointed out that it's really important na medyo hindi pa dito laganap sa Pilipinas in terms of pagsasaliksik. Pero dapat nating tuunan din ang pansin na yung role ng tatay, the paternal's role, uh, in terms of rearing the children. Kasi kailangan talaga matuunan siya ng pansin kasi uh, kasi yan yung, yung extending the paternal leave is something to do uh, about making uh, the men's presence in the household being felt more by the children. And, and then, the, yung nga sabi natin kanina, there are already outcomes that are positively affected by the presence of, uh, of fathers in, in the household. So that in itself can, can, can uh, you know, help a children. No, marami mga children outcomes na positively affected by the presence of, of um, fathers, presence of men in the household. So I think isa siya sa pwedeng maging basehan on why we should give um, extended paternal paternal leaves, I think. Thank you. Uh, other questions, please? Okay. Um, actually, mine is just an input. Um, probably, um, in this kind of environment, kasi, we already know that there are issues surrounding um, the need for women to uh, be more active in the workplace. And then, um, as Miss Cheeky said, uh, alam niya from other countries, there are best examples on um, how we can help women enter into the workforce. But for us on the business side, maybe we can also work with you in the research field na to share naman existing best practices in the workplace na there exists, may mga childcare services na, um, may mga multinational companies who are leading in terms of policies, uh, in terms of giving benefits to women who are working or to working mothers. Maybe for the private sector to also um, share those best practices. Kasi alam naman natin yung mga Philippine, mga Filipino people, they're very hesitant. Kahit alam na nila yung issue, pag hindi nila nakita na may gumagawa para i-address yun, hindi sila nag, parang nag-take on to, to address the issue. Maganda rin siguro kung merong mag-share ng best practice para mas ma-encourage sila mag-implement ng bagong policy within the workplace. So, that's just that's a, a very welcome idea. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ernst, and uh, thank you for your presentations. Working on the maritime se sector, I have yet to see the industry applying the gender lens. So, even if there is a TCW, which is uh, resolution number 14, that uh, uh, promotion of participation of women in the maritime industry, uh, kasi, uh, sa ibang agency, parang hindi pa nila matanggap, pero nakaset, nakasim sa sa maritime, uh, international maritime organization. Pero minsan, uh, siguro parang my question, uh, hindi naman sa question, it's just like uh, for suggestion on future studies. Kasi uh, sa experience ko, uh, may ibang kapitan na hindi tumatanggap ng officers or ratings on board. Pero, ay nanonuman siya ng HR, in-approve siya, pero pinalala, pero hindi niya matanggap na mayroong on board. But, ano, parang ang hirap kasi, ano, i, uh, yes, so, so sa future siguro, baka medyo malayo ako sa, sa topic, pero gusto ko lang i-share kasi I have been with, uh, yes, yung set setup kasi, since nung uh, uh, sa family, alimbawa, nag-aaral siya started, Okay na kasi sa family na mag-seafarer siya as a, we, as a sea woman. Not as a, kasi sa mundo kasi ito ng mga lalaki. Which is, ngayon mayroon na. Wala pa kasi data. Mag, walang data. Uh -oh. so, so yung parents, set na yan, alam na nila. So, alam nila na mag apply sila as sea woman. Pero pagdating sa time na nakaset na siya, pero medyo nahiraman kasi 
hindi pa siya medyo tanggap. So, yung data siguro yung pwedeng ma-encourage para si Marina or some other agencies na ma-promote, ma-implement siya. This is a valuable point, sir. Thank you. Okay. Other comments or questions? Ma'am, please. Uh, good morning. I'm Annette from the DSWD, uh, specifically the National Household Targeting Office. Um, I've been hearing that there are suggestions on the support programs for working women. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, there is already a law uh, asking all public and private agencies to set up a daycare center or child minding center uh, specifically for um, to, to help our women workers. So I think ang nagiging problema lang is regarding yung compliance of these agencies. Uh, unfortunately, based on our uh, observation, the child minding centers or daycare centers are usually for a short period of time. Unlike um, what I heard from Singapore, they have a uh, eight hours uh, child minding or uh, daycare center uh, talagang during the working hours of the women uh, but then mahal din uh, I heard a suggestion that it's a, a, a good practice for maybe in the middle class or upper class women you can afford a daycare center but how about for the poor women? Um, yun yung nagiging problem. Kasi ang practice nga ngayon, it's only for two to three hours. So, papaano? Papaano na lang yun? Maybe it's just an improvement. On the paternity leave, I think the new law extends uh, the number of leaves for um, fathers. Uh, I'm not sure palang kung how, how long. Or I think there's also a provision for it, for it to transfer yung leave nung mother. Seven days. Yeah, seven, seven days. days. Na pwede mong ilipat dun sa husband. So meron ng mga initiatives ang government. But I think, yeah, we still need to improve on it. Thank you, ma'am. Those are uh, very important inputs. Well, allow me to take off my moderator hat for a while so I can ask a question. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because we are now entering the age of the fourth industrial revolution, which is characterized by using <coughs> automation among other things. No? So, what do you think will be the effect of increasing automation to uh, the labor force participation of, of women? Will it be more advantageous for them or more disadvantageous? And in what way? Because there have been studies, there were studies that have been uh, released by, let's say, ILO and other organizations saying that increasing automation will disproportionately affect women. Any thoughts or any, uh, let's say, for the, for, well, for the agriculture sector and for our other uh, researchers? Just to jumpstart the discussion, no? yeah. Kasi ang alam ko, pagkakaalam ko, ang effect ng automation, uh, essentially, it will not, it will affect probably manufacturing, production, but not not necessarily on the services like childcare. Because, you know, automation, di mo naman pwedeng gami <laughs> robot mag-alaga sa anak mo, di ba? So maybe yung childcare, um, hindi siya masyadong, well, may, maybe it's still far-fetched now, but what I'm saying is that mga robots, probably will not, yung mga care economy, hindi yan mapapakailaman ng mga robots. There are certain types of services uh, which cannot be, uh, uh, which cannot be delegated to robots. And that would be care economy. Uh, 
Well, uh, let me go back to history. Yung nagawa yung washing machine, tsaka yung vacuum. Well, actually, washing machine, kasi yun yung pinakamalaking oras na kinukuha sa mga babae ng panahon na yun. When that happened, that freed a lot of time for women that allowed them to go to, to, to study, to, to participate more in the labor market. So that's a good thing. Now, uh, balik tayo sa current. Uh, I think uh, technology will be able to uh, facilitate or help your care economy. Uh, one, uh, I've seen this um, robot, tapos isaswadil mo yung baby, tapos didikit mo dun sa robot, tapos gaganun-ganun yung robot, tapos makakatulog yung bata. Diba? Ang laking, ano, ang laking, <laughs> ang, ang laking tulong sa mga magiging parents. And then we have these robots uh, na parang exoskeleton. <laughs> Sana. Well, exoskeleton, that, would, that helps people carry the elderly. So it gives them more strength than uh, that, that is uh, humanly possible. So I think that's a plus. But then there's the flip side. Uh, not everyone will be able to access these types of technology. Okay. So malabang mayayaman or maybe middle class. But then you still have this uh, poor, poor, poor households that needs help. And kakaay dumaraming oras sa kanila yung pag-aalaga ng bata, ng matanda. Uh, and, and having said that, balik tayo naman sa work side, labor market, uh, hindi ako masyadong natakot para sa mga babae sa Pilipinas. That, because they're more educated than men. So I guess that's a good thing. But then again, wala sila sa labor market. Yun naman yung problema. So, uh, and although, uh, uh, as a percentage, yung mga babaeng, more edu mga babae, they are more into uh, yung mga professionals, and uh, their career women essentially, mas konti na sa services. But then, ito yung mga tatamaan, yung mga, mga somewhere in between. Ito yung mga tatamaan ng fourth national revolution. Yeah, so not really agriculture, but in the vein of uh, uh, automation of tasks within the home. So more of, more of what we've seen, the more of the washing machine, but more intense. And in fact, even some of the child minding, I mean, a parent, as a parent, I would admit that I have relied on tablets and cell phones as babysitters, right? So you don't totally remove the human, but at the margin, you are, you are doing a lot of substitution, actually, of what used to be most of human, human time, contact time. Um, and it, it could be anything. It could be robot. It could even be a driverless car. A lot of the time when I spend for, for my house, I actually drive people around. So, well, some, some, some people in the Philippines, they, they hire a driver. So that's another kind of like, yaya, yeah, instead of yaya, yeah, yeah, driver naman. But again, with a driverless car, that, that, that will be a thing of the past. So there are many, many ways in which uh, innovation can, un can create an unimaginable home life in the next two decades. So I'm actually optimistic that uh, uh, there will now be greater flexibility in uh, choices for both men and women. But perhaps uh, in case of the potential negative impact, we can extend our imagination or even our analysis to female OFWs no, who are assuming uh, housework, you know, domestic work in other countries and what effects may uh, automation may be to them, you know, because, you know, with increasing automation, then uh, their employers could may opt more to have a, you know, more, us, uh, instead of hiring them, maybe may prefer, you know, robots or, well, it's a far-fetched future in, uh, at the moment, but it could happen. <laughs> More productive, actually. Productivity enhancing. Um, or parents can now surveil their children from their office yes. and watch them 24 hours from their desktop, which is a kind of chilling thing for children, but <laughs> it's not impossible. Day and age, nothing is impossible anymore. Okay, uh, we'll take the last two questions if it's okay with you because it's uh, five past twelve. And uh, yeah, please, ma'am. And okay.
I'll just make this quick. I'm Karen from the Philippine Commission on Women. Happy Women's Month. Thank you for <laughs> inviting the PCW to this uh, forum. Um, Ma'am, ano ibalik ko lang doon sa uh, pinag-usapan kanina about valuation of unpaid care work kasi isa din po talaga sa mga uh, issues, gender issues na sa P Philippine Commission on Women siya sabi natin sa ating mga gender sensitivity training na multiple burden is really uh, a gender issue felt by women. So, I'm just curious kung doon po sa pag-aaral ninyo, na-encounter ninyo yung, uh, yung share ng women and men doon sa leisure. I think because it's also part of a uh, non uh, labor or uh, non market ano uh, sphere. So um gusto ko lang i ano uh, tanong ulit ito kasi to make an argument also na pagdating sa leisure mas kakaunti yung oras ng mga kababaihan sa leisure and so they are more stressed and so um and because we want ano uh, we are advocating for shared parenthood eh. we're not we're not into role reversal na yung mga lalaki kayo naman na magtrabaho sa bahay kasi we want we want ano diba gender equal incomes ganyan uh, shared parenthood so gusto ko lang shared parent responsibility gusto ko lang pong malaman kung may ganun po tayong nakitang uh, pag-aaral and also because we are also advocating for a time use survey na Matagal na pong hindi nasundan yung pilot study ng upon ng PSA. So, medyo naglalag po tayo in terms of the other other countries like uh, Latin America, they have very good time use. And so, siguro sa resources, kaya siguro hindi nagpo-pursue. So, are, will there be initiatives also towards this uh, um, uh, time use survey and also the valuation of unpaid work? Because... We want women to be not invisible. Yung care economy is part of, you know, we've seen the data na 20% nga ng GDP, that's a lot na care economy pala yun. So, are there efforts regarding that? Thank you. Uh, if, if you're talking about my, my study, uh, unfortunately, the data set that I, I've worked on uh, do not have that kind of uh, detailed data. So, hindi siya disaggregated into several types of time use. So, it's just housework or work. Uh, and I really agree that, um, you know, if you talk about uh, time use, then leisure is a big part of it. Because that's what I've been telling about the bur um, double burden or yung mga second shift na tinatawag. Um, and and, and uh, it's, it's really nice to hear that um, PCW is really advocating for a time use. So, uh, we, we are um, looking forward na sana PCW can uh, push this, uh, you know, this uh, advocacy to maybe PSA. Uh, so that we can uh, have, uh, we can conduct uh, studies, uh, more studies on, on this type of things. Is there anyone here from PSA who would like to uh, comment? Okay, sige. Pararating na lang po ng PSA yung kung ating mga recommendations. Okay. Uh, yes, Janelle, and last question. Hi. From, sir. Hi, I'm Janelle. I'm from PIDS. So, this regarding an earlier claim that uh, we are an egalitarian society. It was raised by Dr. Tapoykoy. So by egalitarian, meaning that uh, husbands and wives are consulting each other. Uh, they, they should agree with uh, household matters. So, and given the fact that uh, men are, there are more men working outside the homes, does this mean that women are agreeing to this kind of situation? Does this mean that uh, women are uh, willing to be subjected to this kind of a situation. And if that's so, uh, are women suffering from uh, any atti attitudinal issues that should be addressed by the government? Given that uh, they're agreeing uh, that, uh, that we are egalitarian society and they're talking about this situation. Thank you, uh, Madam. I'm from uh, Maguindanao. I have noticed that uh, sa TV lang, the appointments to the Bangsamoro, parang lalaki lahat. Yeah, so 15%, uh, 12 over 80. <laughs> <laughs> 12 over 80. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. And uh, also, uh, when, go, when I go around uh, our province, mga sundalo, sundalo from the Government, sundalo sa ano, puro lalaki. 
Baka maubos yung mga lalaki. Wala kang mga babae. Baka mas mahusay sa pistocks ang mga babae. Uh, ganun din, mga superpowers. President Trump, President Putin, President Xi are women. Baka superpowers, kailangan na mga babae. Uh, is there something with the culture, something like that? Or the ideology? Or, or may I have your inputs, please? Thank you, sir. I'm going to, to uh, address the egalitarian. Uh, Janelle was asking about uh, whether uh, whether it's attitude attitude na ah uh, when kasi dun sa egalitarian ibig sabihin no, there's consultation going around. So uh, I think that parang kasi it has something to do with social norms na rin eh. These are norms that have per per perpetuated. So uh, I'm not so sure kung Ano exactly yung uh, actually yun nga, so I'm not really so sure if it, there are things that you can do when um, mahirap kasing baguhin kapag social norms eh, when it's prescribed by social norms kasi it, ha it has uh, perpetuated for a long time and then here you are trying to advocate things to uh, happen uh, at a sub at a snap of a finger so I think yung yung yung, yung kagaya ng sinasabi kanina ni Mike no na minsan you have to really start from uh, the very beginning. So magsimula ka dun sa bata pa lang yung bata, simulan mo na na magbago yung social perception niya sa mga social classes. So I think yung, yung tinatanong kanina ni Jinal actually is something to do with. Whether the participation is, this, uh, whether Jinal, ano nga ulit tinatanong ni Jinal? Uh, because I want to answer. Whether uh, women are agreeing to this kind of situation, uh, they are willing to be subjected to this kind, given that they agree with their husbands that, okay, this is the setup, and I agree with it, and given that we talk about it, and you should work, I should say at home, and we are willing to be subjected to this kind of situation. Pwede rin natin kasing i... Ang perspective natin is from the perspective of comparative advantages. Eh. So in consultation, it will come about eh. Now, okay, you're doing good at this, and I'm doing good at this, so let's just do things this way and that way. So, pwede ganun yung perspective natin. Uh, so, yung, yung social roles natin is um, being reinforced by the comparative advantages that we have. So, ganun siguro yung perspective na pwede natin itin. If, if I may answer uh, about the egalitarian question, uh, well, comment ko sa bahay. So, I'd like to think na yung kami mag-asawa ay sort of egalitarian na nag-agree siya ng magtrabaho at ako nag-agree din ako ng magtrabaho at pareho kami nag-agree natutulong kami sa bahay. Or at least ako, ang gusto ko, magtrabaho siya sa bahay ako, masaya ako. <laughs> but but, but that, that, that's beside the point. Um, hindi lahat ng households pareho namin. And this is why we have violence sa kiswimin. Na, na mayroong mga pagkakataon na hindi naman ganun yung mga pagkakataon. But, but I guess the point that we're trying to drive at is that we should uh, recognize uh, that time doing housework is actually uh, productive time. Na wala mo siyang bayad, meron siyang value to the household and to society. So I guess that's the bottom line. I want to say. I'm sorry. Um, I remember one historian was asked the question, what is the impact of the French Revolution? And his answer was, too early to tell. So. <laughs> We are 80 years away, as Senator Hontiveros mentioned, from a society where we denied women the, the right to vote. At least now, we find it unthinkable. But in 1930s, the, the reverse was unthinkable. Whoa, what a shock to allow women to vote. It would be chaos. That's what men were thinking. That's why they denied it. For centuries, after they, they launched democracies, boasted about human rights, but one half disenfranchised. So uh, all the tripulante, all the institutions of maritime, I'm pretty sure were founded after centuries. Now we're chipping away at it, trying to introduce, in, insert women there, but then the captain will say, oh, then I need to put new quarters, I need to have different uh, bathing arrangements, etc." I don't want to bother with all of that cost. Let the old boys network predominate. The democracy is also arranged the same way. So, until 80 years ago, all the parties, all the institutions were male-dominated. 
We allowed, we gave one, one person one vote to the women, and now they're slowly chipping in. So maybe my answer is, give it a bit more time. <laughs> What about the Bangsa? 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 Why are you not the number one? <laughs> we cannot critique them. How many hundred years? Well, under the BOL, there's supposed to be certain percentage allocated for women in decision making. So all of us, the ones who were pushing for the approval of the BOL. We're waiting for the announcement of the nominees to the BTA, right? Because um, among the groups who actively uh, campaigned for and who were present in every congressional hearing, whether BBL or BOL, were women's groups, not only from the Muslim communities, but from Christian, evangelicals, and Catholics. Si Sister Arnold nga, every day nandun sa Congress. But look, uh, I mean, it was a perfect opportunity because appointment. Eh. Uh, from the MILF side, 41 nominees. They, I think, if I'm not mistaken, five or seven. But the total is 12. Government side, 39, but they only appointed predominantly men. So, I mean, it was since um, government could have added more women, instead what did they get? Uh, politicians and their surrogates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then if you look at from the point of view of preventing violent extremism, right? There are three sectors who are key, youth, women, and the religious. Youth, tatlo lang ang pinili. Dalawa from MI, one from the government. So religious, one ulama from the MI and Government ap appointed an ED of the counterpart in CBCP. So, I mean, this for the three years, they're supposed to be transitioning. First 60 days, they'll do the organizational plan, whether planning the bureaucracies and on priorities. Uh, I mean, just numbers alone, right? It, it, I, it would, we wouldn't expect anything that would be more. Uh, proactive in terms of pushing women's rights mm -hmm. because of the, they get outvoted. Mm -hmm. And then look at the, although yung sa cabinet level, they appointed Liza Alamia for social services. Again, bakit typecast pag social services, DSWD, babae? Bakit hindi DIL, bakit hindi DILG, right? All the key decision-making posts, unfortunately, men. But then you don't have to look at Bangsamora, look at the national. I mean, we we're just a reflection of the bigger pond, right? So until we do something, I was, we were discussing here, perhaps yung a key measure is make sure that the GAD fund goes to like setting up daycare centers rather than beautification or sponsoring beauty contests, right? And then, and then make it and make it establishment of daycare centers as part of the variables or factors in determining the LGU's good housekeeping seal. Okay, so uh, we have run out of time. Unfortunately, in as much as we'd like to extend the discussion, it's already uh, 20 past 12. So please join me in thanking our resource speakers for their very informative presentations. And thank you also to everyone for your active participation. Okay, so lunch, right?